Welcome to Border Crossings. My name is Larry London, and I'm really excited about today's show. Amy Heidelman is one of the fastest and best rappers in pop music today. And along with her fiancé, Nick Noonan, the two combine their skills to create the hit songs that we know called a cappella. Hello. And the mega hit, Broken Hearted. Carmen have been waiting several years for the release of their debut album, and the time is finally here with the Pulses CD on sale this month. Get ready for another fantastic show with today's guests, Carmen, right here on Border Crossings. Hi, this is Larry London. It's the Voice of America, and this time around, we're downtown in S Silver Spring, Maryland, and we're at a nightclub called the Fillmore. The Fillmore Club is host to uh, one of the hottest acts in music these days. They're on the road right now touring for a brand new album called Pulses that's coming out very soon. We welcome Carmen to the Voice of America. Welcome. Thank you. Hey, thanks for having us. Awesome. Well, first thing I have to say is you look stunning. Thank Absolutely. you. Absolutely. Well, you look great too. Well, I mean, I was waiting. But not quite stunning. I mean, Thank you know, you. and you changed the color of the hair. Yeah, I got tired of the brown. Got tired of the brown. To try the blonde out. I heard they had more fun, so. Are you having more fun? So far, yeah. So far, yeah. I don't know if it has anything to do with the hair, though. <laughs> now, did you guys get married yet or not? Somewhere on the internet, it said you were married. Somewhere it people, said people assume you. we're married, and the other half don't even know we're together. Yeah. Right. So there's, and we're, our moms call us every day and ask us yeah. the same question. Has it happened yet? We're somewhere in the middle. <laughs> we're still engaged. <laughs> right. We've been engaged for over th three years now. Too long. Way too yeah. Way too long. Now, was this a romance before you started working together, or did the romance start after you guys formed the group? No, it, it was way before. It mm -hmm. was way before. Yeah, and it, the relationship was going. Really well, so we're like, well, how can we screw this up? Let's work together. <laughs> so that's what we did. And I heard you do an interview on a radio station where you said it's amazing that you guys managed to make this work because you have such different tastes and backgrounds. We do. It's it's interesting. We have very different backgrounds, and um, and kind of we grew up on very different music. But yes, uh, when we but make there's, there's a lot of similarities too. There mm -hmm. are a lot of similarities. Yeah. I think there has to be a balance. Opposites do attract, but mm -hmm. you have to have some synergy. We're also our birthdays are two days apart. Yeah. Oh, so in April. I think. In April. So we're both we're both Tauruses. So oh. we're you know. Stubborn. <laughs> now let's talk about the new album Pulses. It hasn't come out yet. Not yet. Got a date? I think. Yes. Is it uh, is it safe to say yes at this time? We're I, we're everybody's <laughs> saying March twenty fifth. March twenty fifth. So yep. we're going with that. Pushing we're sticking to, to it. Yep. It's really great. It's we're so proud of it. We spent over a year recording it and. We had the live show in mind, so it's so great that we're at the Fillmore tonight getting to perform a lot of those songs for the fans. Mm -hmm. And they're not even out, you know, for purchase, so it's cool they get a little taste before it's even official. Mm -hmm. And the new singles, I Want It All. That's it's right. Doing very well. That one is out on yeah, iTunes. Yeah, we're playing it. Awesome. Thank Buzz you. Buzz is great. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. Very you. Much. Yeah, Appreciate yeah, yeah. it. Well, hey, we, we support you, you, Carmen, and, and you guys are popular all around the world where our audience, you know, is now listening and, and watching. And so, how did you come up with the name Carmen? That's a question I, I was told to ask you. Our audience has written in some questions. So, Carmen, because your name is Amy, your name is Nick, so Carmen is... Right. No Carmen's here. No, no, no Carmen's. Carmen's. Yeah. Next question. <laughs> <laughs> we, we were looking for the coolest band name in the world, as uh -huh. every band does, and it was hard to find. There's a lot of bands out now, and it's hard to find a unique name. We wanted something short, which makes it even more difficult. you got to do, like, the jumping squirrel magician... So you Lollipops. gotta come up with a long name. So we were like, what's short? What's something that's a really beautiful name? It means something to us. Mm -hmm. So we looked up all the dictionaries, and Carmen means song in Latin. And uh, we put the word karma in there, too, because we felt very strongly about that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, you guys have great karma, obviously, chemistry, karma. Who does the songwriting? Is it a collaboration? or is it... I obviously write all the songs. Hey, the ones obviously. that you like. The ones I like. He I wrote obviously the write all the other ones. <laughs> <laughs> no. no. It is actually completely collaborative. It switches. Mm -hmm. Sometimes um, she does most of the melodies and I do a lot of the lyrics. Sometimes I do a lot of the melodies and she does a lot of the lyrics. Mm -hmm. um, I'm kind of getting more, much more into, the, into production now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So kind of you know steering it sonically and like where we need to go. And, and you'll see like in that. the show he plays like every instrument under the sun. I mean mm -hmm. he'll just rip out a trombone and be on keyboard and there's a drum over here. It's like 
None of them well, though. I don't play any of them well. I do play a lot of them, but they're all terrible. Yeah. Now, what were you, I mean, obviously, Berkeley College of Music, you were studying music, but in particular area of music? Uh, you... Yeah, I was a jazz guy. So jazz I, guy. I, was, I did play trombone through college. That's what got me into college and everything. So I was a heavy jazz guy, heavy music snob the whole night. A lot of that arranging. And, Very snobby. Yeah. Any trombone in the show? A lot of trombone. A lot of, a lot of, trombone. of trombone in the show. Way too much, actually. <laughs> we found this company that makes plastic ones, and they're in every color of the rainbow, so we have mm. like eight different colors of trombones. Mm. We do. In the tour bus. It's we awesome. We only brought four on this tour, but still. Four on this tour. Um, but yeah, mm. it's, 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 it's quite a crazy. At school, I studied songwriting. Songwriting. So ah. I did a little bit more. When that. you're writing a song, is it the melody or the words that come to you first? Melody. Most melody. of the time. Mm-hmm. There's Almost only two the that is, has been words first. Yeah. It's really hard. I mean, some people do write that way, but having a, an amazing lyric first and then trying to marry it to an amazing melody is, is, can tough. be really difficult. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And most of your music sounds very upbeat, danceable, happy stuff. That's kind of how you, you know, like to be positioned. Is that the kind of music you want to come out with, is the upbeat stuff? You come broken hearted, but yet it sounds like you're having a party, and it's called broken hearted. I know. Yeah, exactly. We actually, we loved, we thought that was hilarious. So we loved that. It's a funny juxtaposition. Yeah. Um, a lot of the, because uh, that, that was a time in our life where everything was happy. Everything was awesome. We had mm-hmm. just come off of these covers on YouTube that got and this amazing reaction. Thanks to the fans, we got a, a record <clears throat> contract signed. Right. And mm-hmm. Now we're with Epic Records, but we, we have learned a lot over the over the last couple of years that has been like a pulse. I mean, it's up mm-hmm. and down. Not everything yeah. is happy all the time. So the album has a little bit of darkness in it now. Mm-hmm. And I hope people like it. I think it's a different side for us, but it's still really good. And so you called the album Pulses, yeah. obviously. So uh, in terms of the, the music on the album, what can we expect? Is it going to be all up-tempo dance music? Is there going to no. be some ballads? Because we wouldn't... I mean, Amy is a great rapper. You're one of the best rappers I've heard. Really fantastic. I'm, we'll talk about that in a minute, but... I mean, you can't ballad and rap, can you? I mean, is that... We've done it before. Can, you can ballad rap. <laughs> ballad rap. We did, a, we did a ballad on the last <laughs> EP that Nick was singing, and then I would come in and rap over the... Just kind of quietly over the chorus, which was cool. Right. Um, but this album does have more of the singing and the, and the slower ballads, and mm-hmm. it's quite a contrast from mm-hmm. the old stuff. Yeah. It must be hard to pick the 12 or 13 songs you're going to put out on your very first album. And we, I'm sure we that was part of the struggle. That. We were literally just having that conversation We were just on the two phone hours actually ago. trying so, to figure that out. <clears throat> oh, yeah, it's really tough because you spend a whole year, 18 months recording this material, and then you're like, okay, now yeah, which cut ones half get of cut? it. Yeah. Yeah. They're all like our children. We're like, but which one's our favorite? Which ones do we sell for medical experiments? We don't know. <laughs> <laughs> now, how many did you write before you came to the final cut? God, I mean, we did a lot. Oh, for this album, I think it was around 20 or 30. So 20 not 30. insane. The first go around, I think we did 50, mm-hmm. and wow. we had to narrow that down to seven, so that was crazy. Yeah. And you've done a lot of cover songs, too, over the years, mm-hmm. you know, Drake's music and, and a lot of different songs. Those are a lot lower pressure. Uh-huh. Those we can just have fun and just put it out, and mm-hmm. it's different when it's your own song. Mm. Now, going back to the rapping, how did you learn to rap? The rapping, so I'm from Nebraska, small town called Seward, and very religious town, and my grandfather was a pastor, so I, I wasn't raised on rap music by any means, but I did love it had the secret desire to be a part of that world and I never imagined that I would be accepted or considered a rapper Mm -hmm. Um, but I did study in Boston and I had a lot of friends who were rappers so I sort of picked up on it and you know rapped along with Dr. Dre and Jay-Z in the shower and everything sounds good in the shower Mm -hmm. you know and then uh, (laughs) then along came look at me now and we were like it's pretty technically impressive if Mm -hmm. we can pull it off Mm -hmm. and I think we pull it off you know it, it, worked it, out. it definitely catapulted us to where we are. Mm. What's been the highlight so far? You've done so much in such a short amount of time. It's, um, a couple yeah, things. There's I think. a couple of things. There's one in particular for me. I'm, I'm a massive Beatles fan. And we did, last New Year's, we were playing a, a show on New Year's. Mm-hmm. And um, at the end of the show, just kind of giving kids high fives at the front of the stage. And one of them was Paul McCartney. And I just kind of stopped for a second. And he just grabbed me. He's like, yeah, man, you. I have a terrible <laughs> British accent. but And I, was just, I just kind of stopped. And I was like, oh, you know, like... Hey, Paul! <laughs> and then uh, he was like, he was just like, yeah, awesome. And I was just kind of like, oh my God. So I just kind of went backstage and was sitting by myself for a while. And he came backstage and was talking to me for a, for a minute. And wow. It surreal. Was, it was very surreal. No, he was a fan. So it was, that was yeah. crazy. And you've performed in Times Square on you know, New Year's Eve on television. We did some mm-hmm. amazing stuff like that. We did Saturday Night Live, which was right. one of my big things. And I think my favorite moment is still um, when I met my idol, which is Kanye West. Mm. Sat down with him for like an hour or so and it was just I still think about that it was mm. just amazing and Brandy your favorite singer Brandy my favorite singer yeah 
a couple nerd I nerded out big time. So what I mean what what for the album pulses that is coming out favorite songs on the album? I mean yeah. your personal favorites and why? Yeah, it changes all the time. Uh, there's one called Puppet that we're playing actually tonight too that um, that it goes it's pretty aggressive. <laughs> oh good. Uh, it's about well it's about you know, manipulating someone. So it's, yeah. it's a little intense. <clears throat> Female domination, pretty much. <laughs> and um, oh, I love that. That one's a lot of fun to, to listen to and to play. Uh, there's another one called Tidal Wave. I'm really excited Tidal about. Tidal Wave mm-hmm. is my favorite right now. It's it's a more of a Nick and Amy duet. It feels very duo. It's mm-hmm. very Carmen. It's simple. And there's some really heavy lyrics in that one. Mm-hmm. Any surprises? I mean, when people hear the music, is it going to sound what people are accustomed to hearing from Carmen? Or are you I don't try know. And change it's, it up? It's or? hard for us to say because we've been living with so many songs for we're a year now. We're used to them now. now, so we're uh, like, absolutely, this is the sound. But then, the reaction of the live show, we, we're playing about half of the album in the show and people mm-hmm. are loving it. So yeah. I don't think they're shocked. There is one little trick that we do with a microphone that changes my voice a little bit. And I think people were shocked by that. But that's about it. I mean, you, your training, you said, was in, in what type of music? Um, you said jazz for you, but what? jazz. Uh, mine was. I took a couple of voice lessons, but it wasn't uh, anything. You have major. a beautiful voice. I mean, Thank you. Thank you. It's yeah. not. I'm not, you know, formally trained like that. But my sister is. She's an amazing opera singer. Mm. And so for the future, I mean, you're touring. You're here in the states doing a number of shows, headline tour, and then are you off to Europe? Are you traveling the world? Is this a world tour? Are you planning a world tour? I, we would love to do a world I hope tour. So. We're really kind of putting the pressure on our booking agent and management to make sure that um, we do go everywhere. I know you haven't actually toured anywhere else with like the full band and everything and that's mm-hmm. such an important thing for us so we want to go to the uk and europe and mm-hmm. australia south america south america asia we, we were did just... just get to go to indonesia and that was awesome and that was amazing we did but... one show flew all the way over there mm-hmm. yep and it was just one of the greatest experiences so well, yeah, tell we... me more about that because we're on in indonesia. indonesia we're on in all these places australia i mean i know you're huge in australia, australia you get all the time from they're people. so good to us everybody's good to us mm-hmm. i know brazil is huge for us too we need to get there um, but Indonesia was beautiful. We got to spend two days in Bali mm-hmm. and really enjoy the beauty of that area of the world. It's obnoxiously it's like, nice. Whew. It's just obnoxious. Have you done Japan? You performed there? We did what? a couple days in Tokyo. Yeah, we, that was there was no real performance. We did a TV performance and a mm-hmm. bunch of press, yeah. but this was this was a solid year and a half ago too. So yeah. nothing nothing recent. But no, man, we want to go to. I mean, uh, I know. I think we're doing really well in Singapore and um, Indonesia and Philippines. Okay. So. In Australia and there, I think South Africa. So we, yeah. we need to go. We need to get those frequent so far, flyer just, miles up, dude. The only way we can communicate <laughs> is on Twitter with those fans. You know, so follow us on Twitter at Carmen Music. That's how we keep in touch for now. But yeah. and I'm sure this is an exciting time with the album finally coming out. I mean, it is, yeah. It is actually. Yeah. It's it's really stressful too. <laughs> you guys trying to you know figure out all the you you you'd think it's so easy just record some music and put it out, but there's yeah. a lot of other things in the way. But it is. It is very exciting. I mean, here's another. One of those strange questions that a listener wrote in and said when you talk to Carmen, ask the strangest place you've written a song. Strangest place. Huh. Oh, um, we didn't have any furniture. We'd just gotten <clears throat> our first apartment and we were playing drums on the floor, I remember, and recording into an iPhone a melody idea that we had mm-hmm. for a song called I'm Just Saying, which is off the first EP. Do you mm-hmm. remember that? Yeah, yeah, I remember that. And I remember just, I was like, well, we can't play drums, the neighbors are yelling. So we were just hitting on the carpet, and it sounded cool. It actually, we actually wish that it could have ended up sounding like that. And the song was on the it was on the EP and everything. Yeah. So it's kind of it's kind of funny for me. Probably um, oh, in the bathroom. That's when you write the best stuff. You do. Yeah, in you get bathroom. great ideas oh, yeah. in the bathroom. <laughs> and then the, not in the hallway in one of these theaters. You know, some some artists have said, yeah, I'm walking down the steps, and there it is. And then there it is. Ah, yeah, yeah. Maybe is. there's the, the ceiling. You've woken or up in the middle of the night and been like, oh. Yeah, I have. Got I have. That, yeah, you just kind of wake up and you have a whole song in your head and you try to get it out before you forget it. You know? I wish that happened to me. What's your favorite part of this business? Is it the performing, the recording, the songwriting? What do you like most? That's a good question. Um, that is a good question. It, it's different things for different reasons. For It's probably mostly performing for me. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I think that's that's the most stress release. That's the most... Um, Exhilarating. The least amount of BS. You know what I mean? You can right. just go out there and scream into a microphone mm-hmm. for an hour and a half. <laughs> I like changing it up. I'm one of those people that I have to move the furniture around every six months. You know, change so. the hair. Exactly. Yes, <laughs> oh, it's awful. But that I just love. Me nuts. We'll be, we'll be exactly. <laughs> we'll be traveling somewhere, and he's like, "You need to do this or that," and I'm like, "I'm drawing fashion design ideas. Just this I have to keep my me. mind, you know, mm. busy and not get too. I, I get really zoned in. He's got to keep me zoomed out." Mm. So is that something that you want to aspire to do as well? In addition to the music, is fashion designing? Is that? You sound so. like you're doing it already. I so. feel very much like 
an amateur. I have no idea what I'm doing. Yeah. I just love it. She has hair tutorials that get millions of views on YouTube for different things, and before they even know that, you know, that's Amy from Carmen. So, mm -hmm. oh, absolutely. There's a, that's a whole thing. That's that always in. exciting. Wow. But, but yeah, we'll see what what happens. And what will your label be called? Um. Well, right now it's a blog called Carmenology. Carmenology. It's not launched like it. yet, but we're working on it. And when you release your own line, do you have a name for the not line? Not yet. No. Not we need some it. ideas. No. Somebody give us ideas. All right, send them in. Start <laughs> send writing them now. In. Send them on in. Carmen. <laughs> we'll steal your ideas. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for coming. <laughs> so this tour is going to go till when? When is this tour? I know artists never stop touring. The tour that never ends. You just Pretty keep much. going Hopefully and going. But it'll, eternal. it'll eventually. So this is a this is a. Quick Mini little tour. cute one. Yeah, this is this is just pretty much the coast and a couple stops in the Midwest. Mm -hmm. And um, this is about a month, but then I think we're going to do the South in April. Mm -hmm. Okay, because you know, 2014 is now here. The future plan. The album comes out, and then hopefully a world tour because the audience around the world desperate to see you guys in person. I hope so. Yeah, yeah whether no. that's us by ourselves or maybe tagging along with another artist, mm -hmm. we just want to see everybody. Yeah, well, it's great. It's wonderful to meet you. You know, Nick and Amy. Thank you so much for coming on the show. Thank you for having me. Oh, and I want to give you a chance to say hi to our worldwide audience and you know around the world who love you. If you look at the camera and if you've got a message of love you want to send from Carmen. Thank you. Oh, go ahead. Hi guys, it's Amy. Hi guys, I'm Nick. And we're Carmen, as you may know. We love you so much. Thank you for supporting us all this time. Um, keep in touch with us directly on Twitter, at Carmen Music. We're always talking to fans and, and friends and everybody on there. And hopefully, we'll be coming to a city near you soon. Very soon, with our full band and our full album. And we can't wait to meet and play for you guys. We love you, and hopefully we'll see you uh, sooner than later. Thank you, guys. Carmen, on The Voice of America, it's Border Crossings. Border Crossings.